Praise God from whom all blessings flow. The Didache. The Didache Apostolorum. Didache means the teaching, and Apostolorum means of the apostles, the sent ones. Refer to Acts 2.42. The teaching of the twelve apostles. The Didache. Chapter 1. There are two ways. One of life and one of death. And the difference between those two ways is great, obvious. The way of life is this. First, you should love God who made you. Secondly, love your neighbor as yourself. And whatsoever things you do not desire to be done to you, do not do them to someone else. Now the words of this teaching are this. Bless those that curse you, and pray for your enemies, and fast for those who are persecuting you. For what credit is it if you love those who love you? Don't those who ignore God do the same thing? But love those hating you, and you will not have an enemy. Keep yourself from fleshly and bodily cravings. If anyone hits you on the right cheek, turn the other one to him also, and you will be acting maturely. If someone should force you to go one mile, go with him too. If someone takes your coat, give him your shirt also. If anyone should take from you what is yours, do not demand that he give it back, for you cannot. Give to everyone asking you, and do not refuse. For the Father desires to give to everyone from his own gifts. Blessed is the one who gives according to the commandment, for he is innocent. Woe to the one receiving. If anyone receives under pressure of need, he is innocent. But the one who receives without need shall account for his receiving. Furthermore, being held he shall be examined concerning what he has done, and he shall not be released until he has given back the last cent. It has, said, it has been said concerning this, Let your money sweat in your hands until you know to whom to give it. Chapter 2 and this is the second commandment of the teaching. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not corrupt children. Nor practice sexual deviation. You shall not steal. Nor practice spiritism. Nor use sorcery. You shall not procure an abortion nor practice infanticide. You shall not cover, covet your neighbor's goods. You shall not commit perjury nor accuse someone falsely. You shall not speak evil nor hold a grudge. You shall not be double-minded nor double-tongued, for the double tongue is the snare of death. Your words shall not be false nor empty, 
but do what you say. You shall not be covetous nor extortionate, nor hypocritical, nor malicious, nor proud. You shall not plan evil against your neighbor. You should not hate anyone, but you should reprove some, and you should pray for some, and you should love some more than your own life. Chapter 3 My child, flee from evil and from every appearance of evil. Do not be ruled by your passions for this leads to murder. Neither be jealous, quarrelsome, or quick-tempered for murders are born out of such things. Do not let yourself develop lust, for this leads to sexual immorality. Do not be foul-mouthed, nor raise your eyes. for this leads to adultery. My child, do not regard omens, for this leads to idolatry. Do not be a sorcerer, nor be involved in astrology or magic purifications. Do not desire to see these things, for that is how idolatry comes. My child, do not be a liar, for lying leads, leads to thievery. Do not be fond of money, and do not try to build your own image, for that also leads to thievery. My child, do not be a grumbler, for it leads to blasphemy. Do not be self-willed, nor entertain evil thoughts, for that is how blasphemy starts. Be meek, have your powers under control, for the meek shall inherit the earth. Be patient and long-suffering, devoid of evil, gentle and good. Be trembling continually at the words that you have heard. Do not exalt yourself, nor act presumptuously. Do not join yourself with the proud. but walk with the righteous and humble people. Accept everything that happens to you as good, knowing that nothing happens apart from God. Chapter 4 my child, you should remember night and day the one who speaks to you the word of God and honor him as you would the Lord. For where the delegated authority speaks, there is the Lord. And you should seek every day the presence of the saints in order that you may be supported by their words. You should not desire division, but make peace between those quarreling.
Judge righteously. Do not favor anyone in reproving transgressions. Do not be double-minded as to whether anything should or should not be. Do not be one who stretches out his hand to receive, but withdraws it in giving. Give a ransom for your sins if you have it to give. Do not hesitate to give, nor give in a grumbling manner, for you know who is the good paymaster who rewards. You should not turn away the needy, but share all things with your brother, not saying that anything is your own, for if we are sharers in the eternal things, much more should we be in the physical things. Do not withhold your hand from your son or your daughter, but from their youth teach them the fear of God, the fear of Adonai, the one in authority. Do not give orders to your slave or your handmaiden, whose hope is in the same God, when you are bitter, lest they, your servants, stop fearing God who is over you both. For God does not come to call men according to their social status, but he calls those whom the Spirit has prepared. And you slaves, submit in fear and reverence to your masters as God's delegated authority over you. You should hate all hypocrisy and all that is not pleasing to the Lord. Do not forsake the commandments of the Lord and keep the teachings you have received, not adding and not taking away. A note on the slavery point in the understanding of the Levitical law. The one who is an indentured servant is actually to receive greater benefits and care as family than the peoples who are employees here in this country who receive mere money. So this comment of slave and you slaves submit in fear and reverence to your masters as God de God's delegated authority over you. This is a person who has actually put themselves into indentured service but they're receiving sustenance, clothing and food In church, you should confess your faults. And do not go to prayer with an evil conscience. When you assemble, you should confess your faults. And do not go into prayer with an evil conscience. This is the way of life. the portion preceding or up to now describing the way of life chapter 5 but the way of death is this first of all it is evil and full of curses lusts adulteries the way of death is full of murders thefts idolatries The way of death is full of curses, lusts, adulteries, 
The way of death is full of murders, thefts, idolatries. The way of death is full of witch witchcrafts, sorceries, robberies. The way of death is full of false witnesses, hypocrisies, and double-mindedness. The way of death is full of fraud, arrogance, boastfulness. The way of death is full of jealousies, foul sp speech, and pride. Those in the way of death are persecutors of the good. Those in the way of death are haters of truth. Those in the way of death are lovers of a lie. Those in the way of death are not regarding the reward of righteousness. Those in the way of death are not holding to the good or to the righteous judgment. Those in the way of death are spending sleepless nights not for good but for wickedness. Those in the way of death are far from gentleness and patience. Those in the way of death are loving useless things, seeking rewards. Those in the way of death are unmerciful to the poor, not helping the hard-working person. Those in the way of death are not regarding the one who made them. They are child murderers. Those in the way of death are destroyers of God's creation, turning away the needy. Those in the way of death are oppressing the distressed and wrongfully assisting the rich. Those in the way of death are unjust judges of the poor, and they are altogether sinful. May you be delivered, my children, from all of these things. Chapter 6 See that no one misleads you from the pathway of this teaching, since it would be contrary to God. For if you are able to bear the whole yoke of the Lord, of Jesus, Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth, If you are able to walk as he walked, you should be mature. If you are not able, do what you can. Concerning meat, do what you can, but keep from that which is offered to idols, for it is the worship of dead gods. Chapter 7 and considering and concerning baptism in this manner baptize when you have gone over these things baptize in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit in running water live water flowing water If you do not have running water, baptize in other water. If you are not able to use cold water, use warm. And if you have neither, pour water on the head three times in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And before baptism, the one baptizing and the one to be baptized should fast, as well as any others who are able. And you should instruct the one being baptized to fast one or two days before. Chapter 8 and let not your fasts be with those of the hypocrites for they fast on Mondays and Thursdays but you fast Wednesdays and Fridays 
Do not pray as the hypocrites, but as the Lord commanded in his gospel. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom done, your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread for today and forgive our debts as we forgive those who owe us. Please do not lead us down in the final test, but deliver us up from the evil one. For you have the power and the glory for everyone, forever. Pray like this three times a day. Chapter 9 Concerning the Eucharist Communion Food of Heaven Body and Blood of Christ Concerning the Eucharist, which means thanksgiving, give thanks like this. First for the cup. We give thanks to you, our Father, for your holy vine of David, your servant, which you made known to us through Jesus, your servant. Glory to you forever. Concerning the broken bread, give thanks like this. We give thanks to you, our Father, for the life and knowledge that you made known to us through Jesus, your servant. Glory to you forever. As this broken bread was scattered over the hills and was brought together, becoming one, so gather your church from the ends of the earth into your kingdom family, for you have all the power and glory forever through Jesus Christ. Do not let anyone eat or drink of your Eucharist meal except the ones who have been baptized into the name of the Lord. For the Lord said concerning this, Do not give that which is holy to the dogs. Chapter 10 After you are filled, give thanks like this. We thank you, Holy Father, for your holy name which you made to dwell in our hearts. God of eternity, God the Creator, God the Everlasting. We thank you, Holy Father, for knowledge and faith and, and immortality as you made known to us through Jesus your servant. Glory to you forever. You, El Shaddai, Lord Almighty, created all things to show forth your name. You give both food and drink to mankind to enjoy. And you give everlasting life through your servant. Above all, we thank you because you are mighty. We thank you because you are mighty. Glory to you forever. Remember, Lord, your gathered people who call on your name. Remember, Lord, your church to deliver her from all evil and mature her in your loving charity and gather her from the four winds separated into your kingdom family which you have made for her because you have the power and the glory forever let grace come and this world pass away Hosanna to the son of David if anyone is holy, let him come and receive this meal. If anyone is not holy, 
let him repent. Maranatha, Lord Jesus, return. Amen. Then allow the prophets to give thanks as they desire after the communion meal. Chapter 11 Concerning Traveling Teachers Whosoever therefore that comes and teaches you all these things mentioned, receive him. But if the one teaching changes what has been taught to another teaching in order to destroy these things, do not listen to him. If his motive is to add righteousness and knowledge of the Lord, receive him as you would Jesus himself. If his motive is to add righteousness and add knowledge of Jesus, receive that person as you would Jesus himself. Judging by motive. Now concerning the apostles and the prophets, act according to the requirements of the gospel. Every apostle, every sent one coming to you, welcome as you would Jesus himself. And he should not remain more than one day, and if he has a need, also another. But if he remains beyond three days, he is a false prophet. And when the apostle goes forth, he should take nothing except a loaf of bread until he arrives at his night's lodging. If the apostle asks for money, he is a false prophet. Also, you should not test or judge any prophet speaking in the Spirit. For every sin will be forgiven, but this sin shall not be forgiven. But not everyone speaking in the Spirit is a prophet, but only if he should have a lifestyle of Jesus. Not everyone speaking in the Spirit is a prophet, but only he who should have a lifestyle of the Lord. Therefore, by his lifestyle you will know a false prophet from a true prophet. And any prophet ordering a meal in the Spirit should not eat of it. Otherwise, he is a false prophet. And every prophet who teaches the truth but does not do what he teaches is a false prophet. But every prophet who stands the test and is genuine, even if he uses symbolic imagery in the church, so long as he does not teach others to do the same, every prophet should not be judged. His judgment comes from God, for he declares that he speaks from God. And this was so with the prophets of old. Reference 1 Kings 13. The judgment of a prophet comes from God. Reference 1 Kings 13, the young prophet and the old prophet. The young prophet does well, does supernatural things, and then he goes on a way that is disobedient to God, and he is ruined by God, not by peoples. The one who is a prophet, a truth speaker, should not be judged because the judgment of that person comes from God. It is the same way with the prophets of old. But whosoever should say in the Spirit, give me money or something else, do not listen to him. But if concerning others in need, he says, give to them, let no one judge him. 
chapter 12. Receive everyone coming in the name of the Lord. Later, by testing that one, you will find out about him where he deviates from the standard. Receive everyone coming in the name of Jesus. Later, as you walk along in tests and evaluations, you will find out about that person where that person might deviate from the standard of Christ. And there's where you can care for one another. is saying not to put people through theological screens but rather receive the one coming in the name of Jesus if the one coming is just traveling through help that person as much as you can that person should not remain with you more than three days if that be necessary but if the one traveling desires to settle among you and has a trade let him work for his bread but if he has no trade you should provide for him according to your own discretion in no way should anyone live on among you unemployed or unbusy as a Christian and if he is not willing to do this he is making a trade of Christ beware of this kind of person But every genuine prophet and teacher who desires to settle among you is worthy of his food. Yes, every genuine teacher is worthy. Like a workman, he is worthy of his food. Therefore, of all the first produce of the wine press and the threshing floor, of all the first of the oxen and the sheep, of your first prophets take the first fruits and give it to the prophets for they are your high priests and if you do not have a prophet give your first fruits to the poorest of the poor if you if you should make bread take it and give according to the commandment Likewise, if you have opened a jar of wine or oil, take the first of it and give it to the prophets. And also take the first fruits of your money and clothes and all of your possessions. As it seems best, give according to the commandment. Chapter 14 regarding first day or Sunday or as the early disciples called it the eighth day because Jesus' resurrection day was treated as a day that was completely outside of any calendar or any cycle or even creation itself the eighth day the eighth day was also the day that the man-child was circumcised and had the greatest amount of blood coagulating essence in his body in his whole life in the eighth day There's something going on in the human physiology around blood chapter 14 the gathering on the first day and when coming together on the Lord's own day break bread and give thanks after confessing your transgressions in that manner your sacrifice will be pure and do not let anyone coming with a quarrel against a brother join you until they get reconciled in order that your sacrifice is not impure
For this has been spoken of by the Lord. In every place and time offer me a pure sacrifice. For I am a great king, says the Lord, and my name is wonderful among the families. My name is wonderful among the nations. In every place and time offer me a pure sacrifice. That means the prayer, any prayer lifted. And the communion. The prayer, it, was, it is written that the prayer lifted by one who is refusing righteousness, the prayer is hindered. It is written that the one who receives communion, who is also refusing righteousness, is actually bringing physical trouble on themselves or their family. illness, suffering, and death. By tasting the body and blood of Jesus and regenerating or reconnecting. So this is very important. For this has been spoken of by the Lord. In every place and time offer me a pure sacrifice, for I am a great king, says the Lord. And my name is wonderful among the nations. Chapter 15. Appoint for yourselves, therefore, overseers and servants worthy of the Lord, gentle men, not lovers of money, true and approved. For they minister also to you the ministry of prophets and teachers. Therefore do not despise them, for they are to be honored among you, along with the prophets and teachers. Do not reprove one another in anger, but in peace, as we have been shown in the Gospel. And do not let anyone speak to a person who is unloving to his neighbor, nor let him hear a word from you until he repents of his unloving behavior. Pray and give and live as you have found in the Gospel of our Lord. Chapter 16 The Final Chapter Watch over your life Do not let your lamps be extinguished. Do not let your Holy Spirit light be extinguished or your body unclothed. Do not remove the righteous clothing of the imitation of Christ. Do not let your lamps be extinguished or your body unclothed, but be ready. For you do not know the hour in which our Lord comes. Assemble yourselves together frequently to seek the things that benefit your souls. For all the time of your faith will not profit you unless you are perfect at the last. For in the last days false prophets and seducers will increase, turning the tender sheep into wolves, and tender love will be turned into hate. This speaks of an insipid, shrouded evil, wolf-like behavior in sheep's clothing, 
hate disguised as friendliness and love. Hatred of God disguised as love and kindness. For lawlessness will increase and they will hate and persecute and betray one another and then the deceiver of the world will appear as though he were the Son of God and he shall do signs and wonders and the earth shall be delivered into his hands and he will do immoralities which have never been done since the age began. Then shall the race of men come into the fire of proving trial, and many shall be made to stumble and perish. But those who remain established in their faith shall be saved under the very curse. And then the signs of truth shall be revealed. First, a sign spread out in heaven. Then, a sign of the sound of a trumpet. And third, the resurrection of the dead, but not all of the dead. But as it was said, the Lord Jesus shall come and all his holy ones with him. Then the world shall see the Lord coming in the clouds of heaven. Thus ends the reading of the Didache. The Didache is an amazing writing that is referred to by the great church historian Philip Schaff as one of the two most important pieces of literature outside of the preserved New Testament, the Didache and Justin Martyr's first apology are these two glimpses of the ordinary life flowing out into the world in the season when the apostles were being killed off and the next generation of people that were learning direct from the apostles were rising up. This is a writing most probably made by Jewish scribes. A memorizable treatise. Memorize the entire thing. People don't understand songs in memory. These things were just memorized. Large, large, enormous portions of scripture were memorized. This was a thing that would be repeated to peoples who have just come into the faith, who have received the proof of their miracles, the proof for, through the teaching, the proof through the scriptures, the proof through miracles, signs, and wonders, which are the way that God indicates that he is real and Christ's power is supreme. Then, okay, now how do we live? The Didache is the teaching, the teaching of the Twelve Apostles. If you look at Acts 2.42, it says, they addicted themselves, they devoted themselves constantly to the teaching of the twelve apostles, to the being together, the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, meaning the communion meal with confession and admission of faults before each one, and to the prayers, the prayers plural, meaning the prayers around the clock, the prayers of the temple sunrise prayer, nine o'clock prayer, twelve o'clock prayer, three o'clock prayer, sunset prayer, the morning and evening sacrifice, and the three stations of Jesus, convicted at nine, nailed at twelve, and giving up his spirit at three, all the angels in the universe, since the first fall, time of the fall, have known that Christ was going to fulfill this in these three hours. That's why 9, 12, and 3. And then the prayer at midnight, when the, whole, when the whole earth stands still in the beauty of God. God is the God of both the night and the day. So listen, read, 
It's very easy to get a copy of the Didache online. Just type in and I received this writing from Scroll, Scroll Publishing, scrollpublishing.com. A companion book to your Bible should be a dictionary of early Christian beliefs. 700 different topics that a person would ask of the earliest Christians who were all persecuted and killed. So that you're not merely accepting modern interpretations of these writings and of the way of Christ. If we have many writings, it has been said to me, if we have many copies of the writings and the information, if we can access the historical accounts, the Holy Spirit may actually not give us the information that we need if we could seek it and read it. Please remember that as you sit and you read scripture and read it aloud to one another and take notes in it and glean the things that God is speaking to you, as you take your time in the word, God is actually creating more time in your life. He's actually regenerating life. You get exponentially more free time and more success as you spend time in the written word and also in the historical documents of the history of the peoples of supernatural faith in Christ. Study the Moravians, study the Moravians. Get yourself a copy of Finger of God film deluxe version. As it is written, Matthew 13, the kingdom of God is like an amazing shopkeeper who has the rarest antiques, meaning the special secret ancient historical literature. A shopkeeper who's got the rarest antiques and the hottest new technological stuff. It's talking about a shop with rare antiques and the hottest new inventions sold side by side. That is what our life is like. That is Matthew 13 verse 52. Understand that. If you're an intellectual, if you're a person who gleans information, understand that the early church writings and the history of the peoples of God and scroll publishing done, people have done a great job of gleaning out you can read about the Donatists, the Nestorians, the Quakers, the Puritans, every single phase and move of Christianity. The Waldensians. It's really cool. Church across Asia and India that was bigger than the church in the Roman Empire. We don't have to have a Western church minded view of Christ anymore. We don't need to cling to a merely church-building, hierarchical, structured, Western church mindset anymore. Be wise and beware. And listen to the Didache again and again and again. And follow along. Read along. This I would have loved to have known as a child. I would have loved to have memorized this as a child. That is not foolish. It's powerful. Every one of these little lines in the Didache you can support with about five or eight different scriptures. That might be a job for you, you and your family. Go through the scriptures and come up with five or eight different scriptures. Go through the Didache and come up with five or eight different scriptures for each one. Thank you, Jesus. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my rescuer.